Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be using our natural convection equations in order to analyze the heat flow into a cheesecake right as we put it into an oven. So to start off, let's go take a look at our geometry. We are going to assume that our cheesecake is perfectly cylindrical. It's going to have a diameter of nine inches, which we can convert to metric at 22.5 centimeters. We're also gonna assume that our height is three inches, which we will call 7.5 centimeters. Now, whenever this cheesecake is first going in, it's going to be at room temperature and we're gonna treat that room temperature as 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the surroundings, since we've preheated the oven, is going to be at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, based on the recipe that I was able to find. But we're gonna convert that to Celsius, and our temperature in Celsius is about 175 degrees Celsius. And of course, inside our oven, we just have air. Right, so all the properties that we're gonna calculate are gonna be based on air. Our goal here is to find the heat flow, Q dot. So we're gonna do this in three parts. We're gonna look at the natural convection of the sides first, which we're gonna treat as just a vertical wall. The top and bottom, we're gonna treat as horizontal surfaces, and we're gonna to have to treat those separately because a hot wall on top has a different Neusselt number than the hot wall on bottom. To start off though, we need to get our physical properties. And we get those by looking at the film temperature, which is just gonna be the average of the surface and air temperatures. And that ends up being 97.5 degrees Celsius. Now, most air tables will not have this number exactly, so we need to go and use linear interpolation in order to find the, a more accurate value for 97.5. Uh, so I did linear interpolation between 90 degrees and 100 degrees. And I ended up with a kinematic viscosity of 2.280 times 10 to the negative fifth meters squared per second. Ended up with a thermal conductivity of 0 0.03077 watts per meter kelvin, a Prandtl number of 0 0.7116, and finally our beta value we're able to just calculate as 1 over t, and that's 0 0.00270. So let's start off on our sides. So our Grassoff number we know is gravity multiplied by beta multiplied by our delta t, which is going to be t infinity minus t s, just to keep things positive. And that's going to be multiplied by our length scale cubed. And our length scale for our sides is going to be the height. All of that is divided by nu squared. Plugging everything in, we end up with a value of 3.332 times 10 to the sixth. We have to do a check to make sure that the effect of the curvature of those walls isn't too much. And we can actually treat this as a straight vertical surface. And that check is simply that our diameter is greater than 35 times the height divided by the grasshop number to the one fourth. So if this diameter that we have, 0 0.225 meters, is greater than 35 times 0 0.075 meters divided by 3.332 times 10 to the negative 6, to the one fourth power, then we're in good shape. And in fact, this right hand side here becomes 0 0.061 meters. So our value here is okay. We're good to move on and use the vertical wall as our geometry. So our next step is to go ahead and calculate the Rowley number, which is just Grasshoff times the Prandtl number. And that ends up being 2.371 times 10 to the sixth, which we can then use to find the Neusselt number. And the value, <coughs> the equation that we will use is 0 0.59 times the Rowley number to the one fourth power. We could use that big long one, right? But 
it's a lot easier and quicker to go ahead and use this value and they're only a few percent off max. So this value, if we plug everything in, ends up being 23.2. Now, once we have the new salt number, we can use that to calculate H. And so H is just the new salt number multiplied by our thermal conductivity divided by our H value, because we use whatever our characteristic length is. And plugging our new salt, the K value, and H in, we end up with 9.50 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Then finally plugging that in, we get our Q dot for the sides specifically, gonna be equal to this H value multiplied by A delta T. And we know that the area for our sides here is just pi times D times H, which we can calculate as 0 0.053 meters squared. So our area multiplied by our H value multiplied by delta T, which is this 175 minus 20, gives us a heat flow of 78.0 watts. And this is from the air into the surface. So now that we have the sides, let's go look at the top and the bottom. Now for the top and the bottom, almost everything is gonna be identical between the two. For both, the area is gonna be pi d squared over four, which ends up being 0 0.040 meters squared. And the characteristic length for a circle is the area divided by the perimeter, which ends up being d over four, which is 0 0.056 meters. So our Grasshoff number is the same formula as before, but this time we need to use that characteristic length, that d over four. What we end up with from this equation is 1.406 times 10 to the sixth. There's no checks to perform, so we can straight away go to our rally number, which is just Grasshoff times Pranzel, and this ends up being almost exactly 1 million. Our new salt number for the top, we get an equation of 0 0.59 times our Rowley number to the 1 fourth, which ends up being the exact same equation as uh, for a vertical surface. But this is 18.66 for this case. And the new salt number for the bottom is 0 0.27 times the rally number to the one fourth. And for the bottom, our rally, <clears throat> and for the bottom, our new salt number is going to be 8.54. So we can get our heat transfer coefficient, which is just the new salt number multiplied by K divided by our characteristic length. And for the top, this is 10.21 watts per meter squared Kelvin. And for the bot, it is 4.67 watts per meter squared Kelvin. So then finally, we can finish up with Q dot for the top, which is the H of the top multiplied by the area multiplied by delta T. For this one, our area is the pi D squared over four, and the delta T is still the 155 degrees. And so what we end up with with that is 63.3 watts. And then our Q for the bot is pretty much exactly the same, uh, but we end up with 29.0 watts. And that just comes from using that different heat transfer coefficient. So now we have the heat transfer into the sides, we have the heat transfer into the top and into the bottom. So our final step is to go ahead and find the total Q dot. And our total Q dot is just the Q dot from the sides plus the Q dot from the top plus the Q dot from the bottom. And all together, the 78 plus 29 plus 63.3 gets us 170.3 watts. And this right here is our final answer. So this is our heat transfer rate at this specific temperature. Now, over time, our cheesecake is going to heat up in this oven, and we end up with a very interesting dynamic transient problem because the heat transfer into the middle of the cake is actually quite slow compared to the heat transfer of the outside. And so we can't use our normal lumped mass analysis that we have done in the past. We have to go into something that's quite a bit more complex. But all we were looking for this time 
was just this q dot term, we can leave the rest for some other time.